Hello guys and welcome to a new Stood Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you game 1 of a best of 3 between Grey Fox and Karma in the semi-finals of the season 4 playoffs of the Steel Division 2 league. Today they are playing on Slutsk West and both players have decided to play on the allied side. So today on our left in the red team we have Karma using the 3rd Guards Mechanized Core and the Vanguard Deployment Type. And on our right, in the blue team, we have Grey Fox using the 3rd Canadian Infantry and the Balanced Deployment Type. I just want to put a note out there. I recently have started adding uh, screenshots of the divisions to the start of the video, which a lot of you guys have welcomed. Uh, but I just want to point out that I don't actually check the decks before I watch the games because I find it a lot more exciting personally to not really know the outcome based on the way the decks look. So... I don't know when I'm going in, so just bear that in mind. But today, yeah, third guards mechanized versus third Canadian. Both of these divisions are very strong 1v1 divisions. Third guards mechanized uh, has the partisan units matched up with Shermans and an abundance of them. It also has like decent support weapons to back it up. And then the third Canadian is very similar. Its infantry may be not so good at the start, but it definitely has strong line infantry that can back up strong Sherman plays. It also has good options for dealing with enemy medium armor, like six pounders. And you've got the fireflies available, which will actually be pretty vital for cutting down the medium armor of the third guards. Like the fireflies will outmatch the Shermans at range, which will be really nice. Either way, let's have a look at what sort of compositions we've got going down. So Gavali on the top there for Karma, just going to be taking control, I assume, of this flag uh, on its own. Then we've got two Partisans and a Gavali on a 45 mil heading to his side of the town. Uh, further down we have Partisan MG42 with Gavali, 45 mil AT gun. There's a 50 mil mortar there and a Sherman. And then on the bottom side, looks like this is where he's going to be making the most of his effort. Um, Valentine, Sherman, Gavardia, Gavardia, Gavardia actually in a M2A1 half track there. Dosor squad, 245mm AT guns and an MG42. And there's also a Zist2 here with a 152mm off map at the start of the game. On the right side for Grey Fox, he's got snipers, a rifle leader, three rifles with Pia, and a six pounder there. Firefly and a Sherman 5 moving up to the front. Firefly going to be holding the center on top of this hill. Uh, then he's got the six pounder rifle leader, two defense group, and a rifle with Pia, followed up by a Sherman heading towards the town. Two sniper scouts with a six pounder Humber Mark III and rifles to the top side. So it looks like the rifle's there. Gonna try and hold on to this flag on the very top. Whilst the six pounder moves into the tree line, and the sniper scouts will try and get some information on what Karma's bringing in. But I think we've got to pay attention to the bottom side of the map in this engagement as we do see the off-map approaching from Karma, and that has the potential to do a lot of damage to Grey Fox's forces. The Six Pounder is in a kind of odd position here on the bottom side. He's unloaded it with the Sniper Scouts. It's okay for any units that might try and flank around the bottom. You can see that Karma's also placed a Zis-2 down here, just to kind of cut off any armoured movements. Uh, but, yeah, personally, I don't think Grey Fox uh, is really going to get much out of that Six Pounder if it can't fire up this road. 245 mils here for Karma, definitely covering that. Well, we've got a 45 mil actually unloading in the face of the Firefly. The 50 mil mortars firing away, already a transmission damage there. Looks like the Firefly will save itself. These Fireflies actually don't deal with units at close range very well because they only have got 130 cal, as opposed to Shermans which have 230 cals and a 50 cal. Um, in a lot of cases, especially the Sherman 3s. Uh, so, for example, here uh, th they've got two 30 cows and a 50 cow. The Sherman 5 DDs, they do not because they have the um, duck webbing around the edge uh, that prevents the front machine gun from firing. Either way, off map is in position. We've got the. Wow! Okay, the Sherman taking out the Firefly here. The Firefly was actually showing side armor, so the M4 managed to get the kill onto the Firefly, and the Gavardias are going to take that flag in the center. 
M2A1 does go down as it approaches to the Sherman 5 and I would suppose that the reason Karma threw that half track forwards was to find out uh, where the anti-armor was. So he's seen the Sherman 5 on the bottom side, he knows that's there. He's got some serious damage done to these rifles, he's even killed a squad with that off map. Dosor squad does take a shot there. Sniper scouts must have revealed them temporarily because they're quite far away for the Sherman to spot personally. Oh, the M4 again with the side shot on the Grey Fox's armor here on the bottom side. That is not good. It does look like a transport snipe was found here onto one of the squads of Karma, but two partisans in position holding this. There's a lot of stuff here that isn't doing anything right now for Grey Fox, and that is uh, quite a big mistake. He needs to continue the pressure on the top side, just make sure he's using these scouts to find out what's there, and put a little bit of pressure on, because at the moment he's really giving the initiative to Karma in this engagement. So the 45 mils moved forwards. Uh, one of them did land an APCR shot there. Valentine also trying to get involved. Uh, going to try and take out the sniper scouts. Cavardia DP actually getting quite far up. Does start engaging the rifle leader. Rifle leader is going to do a run for it. The rifle leader is quite important for making these rifles with Piat two star veterancy because that allows them to be much more effective at the medium range versus the Gavardia. Sniper scouts do go down. That's going to get rid of a lot of the recon information that Grey Fox had. Firefly is covering the road. That's a really nice spot actually. All well, the Firefly is kind of covered on both sides by the buildings here but also has a clean line down the road. So we'll be able to snipe future transports that try and head down here. Is going to have to be careful of the way that the turret is facing though because currently it's starting to engage the Gavardia in the center. Sherman 5 is going to be on the way there to deal with that salient. SU-85s going to start their engagement with the Fireflies. The Firefly is going to come under a lot of pressure here. There's an M4 at close range. SU-85s can quite happily try and pen penetrate that from maximum range. The APCR will more than enough will be more than enough to penetrate. The Firefly has already killed one, but the shot from the M4 and the SU-85 gets the job done. Three-star Sherman 5 now engaging Karma's M4, but that's a bounce. Not a welcome one for Grey Fox. That would have been a lovely kill for him to pick up, but not going to be this time around. But the Firefly has gone down. Quite an expensive tank to lose, like especially both of these in the center. I think they're 90 points a pop, maybe 95 points. And that's really going to be rough for Grey Fox to kind of replace at this point in the game because Karma is using the Vanguard, Grey Fox is using the Balance. So in Phase A, Karma's got a 30 point lead per minute on Grey Fox and unless Grey Fox can get some serious value out of his units, he's going to have a tough time. He does manage to get one of those M4s down, but the Sherman 5 has gone down in reply to the 45mm AT guns. We've now got off-map landing on top of this 6-pounder and the two rifles. This 6-pounder really hasn't done anything yet. 45mm on this bottom side has now moved up. I don't know what happened to the Zis 2. It must have got killed somehow. I think it got bombed maybe by the Spitfire. Uh, but the Gavardi is there engaging. Oh, that off-map strike there just absolutely obliterated those units. The Dozo squad moving forwards in the open does get cleaned up. Dozo squad further back here also gets taken out. Dozo moving in for Karma on the top side just to see what's heading his way. He's got two M4s and the Valentine now coming to cover him off as Grey Fox does start getting aggressive with those units further up. Now, it is a little bit too late for some counter-aggression here, I feel. If he'd done that much sooner, he wouldn't have allowed Karma to have so much initiative on this bottom side. And it's really, really making him struggle already. You can see he's down to two rifles of Piat and the rifle leader. Harbour Mark III is being forced back by the off map. Uh, rifles are damaged back here in the open. There's two more rifles of Piat and the rifle leader with the Sherman 5 on the way. And the Sherman 5s can certainly uh, contest a lot of these units at range because they have decent enough penetration and the two star veterancy is really nice. Uh, but it's still going to be uh, difficult because Karma is just going to be able to bring in almost twice as many forces as him in the, in the early game. Well, maybe not twice as many, but certainly more. German 5 does manage to get a clean penetration onto the SU-85. SU-85 does get the APCR shell through the armor. Second one's going to miss, though. 
German fire also misses. Spitfire coming in with a bombing strike since the SU-85 is already damaged. Will those bombs get the job done? Yes, they will. M17 not going to be able to clean up the Spitfire. But meanwhile, the rifles and the rifle leader are dead. And the flag goes over in favour of Karma. So Karma's managed to secure this bottom offensive flag. He has lost the flag in the centre. So it's actually even since Grey Fox is defense group have moved up onto this flag as soon as the partisans engage the defense group here uh, they will end up uh, pushing them out apologies for the freeze in the game there i am using the special viewer for this game so sometimes there are little issues uh, since this was played on an old version but the m4 engaging with the sherman 5 it's going to be hard for that sherman to actually win this engagement because six pounder is firing from distance as well the sherman 5 is three star veterancy whilst this m4 has no veterancy actually it has one star sorry valentine also trying to get in, get an engagement there does actually kill the enemy sherman 5 decent penetration but i wouldn't be surprised to see this m4 now go down however it was firing apcr shots the whole time so the m4 was just kind of tanking the damage uh, but here we go another push coming in here as Karma continues to move his units forwards. Did lose all of the units on the top side, which tried to cross to the open. Uh, but these Valentines have got a nice line of sight on the road. And as they get closer to the Shermans, they're only going to be more and more effective. Uh, because they have really decent rate of fire with strong penetration in their AP shells. So these Valentines can actually be really scary. It does take them a while to get to the front line. They're very slow. Uh, but when they start engaging, especially against Shermans, uh, they can do a serious amount of damage to the medium armor. So Valentine here now engaging the six pounder. Uh, the Valentine can also do a reasonable good job sniping stuff at range like HE sniping. Uh, but the limited damage on the Valentine does sometimes make it uh, just not do anything even though it hits. Sherman 5 here still got some damage to it does manage to kill off the 45 mil though 45s are going to struggle to penetrate Sherman 5s at range Valentine one of the Valentines does go down to the six pounder but the Gavardia they pushed all the way up they've actually captured the second flag on this bottom side and these Gavardia are still contesting the flag in the center and the Valentines are only getting closer and closer the Sherman 5 does not have line of sight of them at distance six pounder is being moved up onto the ridge which will be able to crack down on the Valentines as long as it's microed correctly. If it just starts firing a lot of APCR, the Valentines might have enough time to do damage, especially with the support of the Gavardia. IL-4 coming in with the two 500 kilogram bombs. Now you can see the Partisans have moved up here and done plenty of damage to these defense group. IL-4 is coming in with the 500 kilogram bombs to pin down these infantry and allow the Sherman to push on through. Staghound AA is going to be able to suppress that quite well. Spitfire is going to try and shoot it down, but kind of overshoots the mark there. New infantry arriving on the bottom side, assisted by a T-Gun Zis-2 coming in with two units of Gavardia DP. Going to secure this compound. Valentines going to be opening up onto rifles in the open, but again, the HE not going to do too much damage. Spitfire does go down on the top side to the Cobra. IL-4 gets out alive. German now engaging the six-pounder down the main road, but that's going to be a gun jam from the six-pounder. That is perfect. That might just allow enough time to take out the Sherman, but that's a bounce as the Sherman manages to reverse into cover. Partisans binding the rifle leader here are going to pin those down and surrender them very quickly. And now Karma's also gaining the initiative on the top side as well. He's not really reinforcing the bottom side though. So this could be a place where Grey Fox is able to break back into this game. But as long as this double tick keeps going, Grey Fox is going to lose a lot of tickets and it's going to put him in a very tough position and kind of put him on a time limit at the moment he's got 12 minutes until he loses the game if he continues to concentrate on the bottom side he might be able to push this back but considering he's already been beaten so much on this bottom side by the off map and so on he might be less inclined uh, to reinforce this area but instead uh, reinforce the top area where he's now under pressure instead so with karma kind of changing tack here He's making Grey Fox play into him as opposed to Grey Fox taking the initiative and pushing back. Uh, that would be the best way for Grey Fox at least to recover flags because he's a lot closer to his spawn on this side of the map than he is on the top side. Germans engaging Shermans at range. Exactly the same stats. 
it's all really down to the veterancy but in this case the veterancy is also the same you can see as I click on both of them the only difference is MG ammo and well numbers I guess is also a factor as Grey Fox now has four of these Shermans in position this 152 more off map just just zoomed into the town here I wonder if that's the one from the bottom side he might have just used that to try and get some surrenders onto these infantry units but I'm surprised he's leaving it on the road because it can still be useful for that in the future again Gavardia move up onto the hill help take out the six pounder Valentine's now going to help take out the rifles Gavardia have been damaged quite severely here all of the Gavardia squads are nearly dead that is going to give a flag back to Grey Fox. I'd like to see him continue uh, the pushback on this bottom side. Supported by uh, more Shermans. Should be able to uh, really get a lot of damage done. There's this 2 and 45mm are in position. But with the rifles kind of screening the tanks. You should be okay in taking out those AT guns. So what we've got to look for here is the Shermans penetrating the enemy Shermans. It's a very low percentage chance for both sides because they're firing lower penetration value than his armor on the enemy side but Karma's got a really good position here with these Valentines where he's forcing these Shermans to show side armor to one unit or the other and these Valentines are just sniping these Shermans from a distance at the moment with that higher penetration and that's where the Shermans can really help win these engagements because the Shermans are firing each other with 90 mils of penetration but the Valentines come along with the 115 and while well, pop goes the Sherman over and over again 17 pounders have been moved into position 17 pounders definitely going to be able to deal with any medium armor in the game have some serious penetration at range but they've got to hit the mark and they're not particularly fast firing in this case does take out the valentine but gray fox has lost all of his shermans on the top side it looks like the sherman has also been lost on the very bottom here uh, to the valentine i'm not quite sure where it went down Looks like the AT gun, maybe the SU-85 got the better of it. And that's unfortunate. This 2 has died though, and the 45 mil is gone. 6 pounder and Sherman 5 are killing off the SU-85. So if the SU-85 goes down and the rifles continue to push forwards, they're going to be able to defeat Gavardia. And then Grey Fox can back this up to gain back more flags on the bottom side. But it's still 16 to 8, the double ticks still persisting. IL-4 on its way again, this time to just straight up bomb that 17-pounder. 17 17-pounders 17 in this kind of game are going to be quite limited in number because it's a 1v1. Uh, but I guess he might have like two cards of them that would give him maybe eight in total. IL-4 going to be able to get those bombs off. Spitfire does not do the job. Cobra also coming onto the field. Actually, two Cobras now. No AA on the side of Grey Fox. It looks like this IL-4 actually changed tack onto the 17-pounder on top of the hill since this one's already taking a lot of fire uh, from the Shermans moving across the open. So that's both 17-pounders taken care of in one swift blow and that's going to allow the medium armor of Karma to continue their push and nothing really reinforcing this top side anymore. The only things that are left here, rifles on the very top side there, going to be attacked by these Gavardia defense group in the trees there will eventually get spotted and the rifles in the town going to get overwhelmed by the tanker de Sarniki and the partisans there so that's a rough time for Grey Fox none of these units can really hold the front line and it's only going to get worse he's now forced to bring in the another Sherman five or not Sherman three sorry and the 17 pound the 17 pound has really got to do work this time but when you leave them out in the open they get vulnerable to aircraft and the IL-4 bomber shouldn't be, really be able to get that deep but even if that didn't the P-39 would probably be able to strafe it to help out to two two star shermans now arriving on this bottom side the sherman engagement is going to be super important to pay attention to here six pounder placement is also going to be pretty vital because the six pounder is going to have to back up the sherman otherwise what's going to happen is karma is going to 2v1 this sherman and all of the rifles uh, will get absolutely demolished by machine guns at close range uh, as you can see happening there as the rifles walk forward just that little bit too much so Sherman 3 tanking the shots from the Valentines. SU-85 
M4s at a distance. 17 pounder firing away. Oh, lovely shot. Does not get the kill though. Valentine tanks that nicely. And now it looks like the abundance of HE fire there coming in from the medium vehicles. Medium armor does take out the 17 pounder. That's another one gone down. And well, availability might be a concern, but also the fact that they cost a lot of money to bring in. Those 17 pounders aren't necessarily cheap for AT guns, so he's kind of in trouble if he just keeps losing these. He's, he has to kill more than one Sherman, more than one tank with every 17 pounder to make it worth bringing in. And at the moment, I don't think the 17 pounders really got any significant kills. That 17 pounder even bounced then off of one of the Shermans. That is really unlucky. Cobras were coming in for the strafe. Now we got a 2v1 head on. That Spitfire is going down. The second one, not going to be able to do enough damage. That was a terrible engagement for Grey Fox. Uh, he might lose out another Spitfire here because these Cobras are only going to continue the chase. One's going head on. Another one's on the rear. Lovely Micro from Karma gets both the Spitfire kills. The Staghound might be able to shoot down this Cobra. But the job's done really for Karma here. In the air at least. 17 to 7 on the map. Grey Fox does take back the center with the use of the Sniper Scouts, the Sherman 5 and the 6 pounder. Also the rifles backing that up. Getting position onto this hill will give him a nice spot for dealing with the armor of Karma. One of the Shermans has died on the bottom side here, but it looks like it traded with the other Sherman on the side of Grey Fox. Now if these are 2v1, then that Sherman probably would have died before Karma lost one, but maybe Karma was focusing elsewhere when that happened. Rifles just trying to take on this infantry, but really, really tough when the Shermans are attacking at close range. On the top, with the rifles cleaned up and all of this area taken, it's really, really bad news for Grey Fox. I'm surprised he's still in this game because when your opponent is breathing down your neck into your spawn, that is not a good place to be. And well, there we have it. Minor victory, 19 minutes, 36 seconds. Karma takes the victory over Grey Fox, 2,485 kills to 1,655 losses. Very nicely done, Karma. I think a lot of this comes down to the Vanguard deployment type that really, really gave Karma a nice advantage in Phase A that he managed to exploit. I liked the use of the Fireflies from Grey Fox in Phase A, but they didn't really pay off, unfortunately. Like, not necessarily, like, how they were used, but the choice to bring them, I think, was really smart for Grey Fox because he knew that he was going to be up against a lot of medium armor in the form of the Shermans, the Valentines, uh, maybe not so much the SU-85s, but those Fireflies should be able to deal with that medium armor at range, and that's something that's really, really nice with them. The Shermans struggle to penetrate the Fireflies while the Fireflies can just pick them off. But Karma managed to get close enough where that disparity didn't really matter so much and his Shermans could penetrate. The, the uh, Valentines also managing to get close was nice as well, allowed him to penetrate. And then the SU-85s, wherever something couldn't penetrate, like the um, uh, Valentines or Shermans, the SU-85 can use the APCR uh, to get through a bit heavier armor and be maybe more accurate. Um, also, I think we saw a couple of... Uh, ammo switches there which you actually can't do anymore in the game um, to increase the rate of fire of those SU-85s. So Karma really on point with his use of the medium armor and trading very well with that. Um, also uh, managed to use the off map to great effect at the start to really push back uh, the bottom side of that map and then proceeded to switch entirely to a top-sided push and forced Grey Fox to react to both of them. And again, uh, Grey Fox at the top definitely had a huge advantage at the top, uh, uh, at the start, sorry, but didn't take advantage of it. He, he didn't push forwards his forces. He deployed a lot of units on the top side and then just didn't use them for, half, for like half of phase A, which was really, really bad because Karma had already gained an advantage in the bottom side and Grey Fox hadn't gained an advantage where he could have in the top side. And that would have made things a lot more even for phase A 
and maybe moving into phase B uh, would have put Grey Fox in a much better position uh, for his balance deck to pull through into phase C, where in phase C the balance deck completely outdoes the Vanguard deployment type for the rest of the game. So Grey Fox really needed to get to that late game, but couldn't quite get the kills he needed in the early game just got to get really good value out of your units if you're going to use a balanced deployment type because otherwise you're just going to get overrun and the game's going to end before you can make use of that juicy late game income so yeah loads of value coming out of these shermans and valentines here for karma this valentine getting two sherman fives i really love the use of these valentines i'm not a huge fan of them because they're just so slow but when they can get into range of these shermans and you have these allied versus allied matchups i can see them why they are so useful as for the losses well the, the fireflies didn't really kill as much as they should have the fireflies should have been the main killers of the shermans and the valentines but the trouble with the 17 pounder that the fireflies and the 17 pounder at guns have is that they don't really have enough damage to like one pop the valentines and that's a problem because the 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 least the less time you take or the less the more time sorry you take to kill the valentine the more time it has to get closer to you and the closer it is to you the more it's going to penetrate you and so the problem just persists especially if you're going to miss the 17 pounders aren't necessarily the most accurate and both of those fireflies i don't think really had uh, any veterancy so yeah you've got to hit those 17 pounders with the 17 pounder in order to make it work and in this case no veterancy next to the fireflies caused them to uh, not really be as effective as they otherwise could have been um, so that was something to uh, pay attention to but overall i think it was just karma making gray fox play into his hands that really uh, won the game for karma he's a very very strong player and uh, gray fox losing out in this one but i we'll have to wait and see if he can bring it back in game two of this best of three and uh, even things out that'd be interesting look forward to seeing that that's it fast and furious game for game one uh, let's see if we can get a longer one in the next one that's it yeah hopefully you guys enjoyed it thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video goodbye